today we're going to talk about the special guardianship order. The provision governing special guardianship guardianship order is found in sections 14a, b and c of the Children Act 1989. Section 14a provides as follows. Subsection 1. A special guardianship order is an order appointing one or more individuals to be a child's special guardian or special guardians. A special guardian must be aged 18 or over and be must not be a parent of the child in question and sections 3 subsection 3 to subsection 6 are to be read in that light. Subsection 3 provides that the court may make a special guardianship order with respect to any child on the application of an individual who a is entitled to make such an application with respect to the child or B has obtained the leave of the court to make the application or on the joint application of more than one such individual. Subsection 4 provides Section 9 Subsection 3 applies in relation to an application for leave to apply for a special guardianship order as it applies in relation to an application for leave to apply for a section 8 order. Subsection 5. The individual who are entitled to apply for a special guardianship order with respect to a child are as follows. A. Any guardian of the child. B any individual in whose favour a residence order is in force with respect to the child. Subsection C. Any individual listed in subsection 5B or subsection C of section 10 as read with subsection 10 of that section. And D a local authority foster parent with whom the child has lived for a period of at least one year immediately preceding the application. Subsection 6 provides the court also may also make a special guardianship order with respect to a child in any family proceedings in which a question arises with respect to the welfare of the child if a. An application for the order has been made by an individual who falls within the section 3 subsection A or B or more than one of such individual jointly. Or if the court considers that a special guardianship order should be made even though no such application has been made. Subsection 7 provides no individual may make an application under subsection 3 or 6 subsection A unless before the beginning of the period of three months ending with the date of the application he has given written notice of his intention to make the application. Subsection A if the child in question is being looked after by a local authority to that local authority or b otherwise to the local authority in whose area the area uh, the individual is ordinarily resident on receipt of such a notice the local authority must investigate the matter and prepare a report for the court dealing with a. The suitability of the applicant to be a special guardian. B. Such matters, if any, as may be prescribed by the Secretary of State 
and any other matter which the local authority considers to be relevant. The court may itself ask a local authority to conduct such an investigation and prepare such a report, and the local authority must do so. The local authority may make such arrangements as they see fit for any person to act on their behalf in connection with con conducting an investigation or preparing a report referred to in subsection 8 or 9. The local authority may make such arrangements as they see fit to carry out the investigation on their behalf. The court may not make a special guardianship order unless it has received a report dealing with the matter referred to in subsection 8. Subsection 8 and 9 of section 10 apply in relation to special guardianship order as they apply in relation to section 8 orders. This section is subject to section 29, subsection 5 and subsection 6 of the Adoption and Children Act 2002. Section 14b is headed Special Guardianship Orders Effect and reads as follows. Before making a special guardianship order, the court must consider whether, if the order were made, a contact order should also be made with respect to the child and any Section 8 orders in force with respect to the child should be varied or discharged. On making a special guardianship order, the court may also give leave for the child to be known by a new surname, grant the leave required by Section 14C, Subsection 3 and Subsection B, either generally or for specified purposes. I shall now deal with Section 14C. Section 14C is headed Special Guardianship Orders Effect and reads as follows. The effect of a Special Guardianship Order is that while the order remains in force, a special guardian appointed by the order has parental responsibility for the child in respect of whom it is made and b subject to any other order in force with respect to the child under this act a special guardian is entitled to exercise parental responsibility to the exclusion of any other person with parental responsibility for the child apart from another special guardian Subsection 1 does not affect the operation of any enactment or rule of law which requires the consent of more than one person with parental responsibility in a matter affecting the child or any right which a parent of the child has in relation to the child's adoption or placement application. While a special guardianship order is in force with respect to a child, no person may cause the child to be known by a new name, a new surname, or remove him from the United Kingdom without either the written consent of every person who has parental responsibility for the child or the leave of the court. Subsection 3 sub B does not prevent the removal of a child for a period of less than three months 
by a special guardian of his. If the child with respect to whom a special guardianship order is in force dies, his special guardian must take reasonable steps to give notice of that fact to each parent of the child with parental responsibility and each guardian of the child. But if the child has more than one special guardian and one of them has taken such steps in relation to a particular parent or guardian, any other special guardian need not do so as, res as respects that parent or guardian. It's worth mentioning that the section is subject to section 29, subsection 7 of the Adoption and Children Act 2002. Section 14D deals with variation and discharge of special guardianship order. And section 14F, dealing with special guardianship support services, uh, are not going to be treated in this discussion. Section 14E is supplementary, supplementary and... Um, it's not going to be dealt with here either. However, suffice it to say that in any proceedings in which any question of making, varying or discharging a special guardianship order arises to draw up a timetable with a view to determining the question, the court must then, without delay, give directions designated to ensure that the timetable is adhered to. Um, in another uh, video, I will deal with um, um, special guardianship uh, support services, um, usually called um, support package and I'll be uh, emphasizing uh, the financial support uh, because uh, recently there's been uh, a lot of misunderstanding as to what the local authority will provide for, what is, how will the local authority calculate uh, this support package. Uh, in another video, I will go into uh, detail, a little bit more detail as to how that is done. But I hope you've uh, enjoyed uh, this uh, short explanation on what uh, a special guardianship order is um, please leave your comments and your views in the um, in the in the comment section thank you bye